Hello and welcome. Welcome to Tech Talks. Our platform edition today is focused on the new Splunk dashboard beta. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices within use cases. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Anna Mensing, a Senior Product Marketing Manager for the Splunk platform, Splunk Enterprise in particular, and I'm excited to share with you information about our new Splunk Dashboards beta and introduce my colleague, Aditya Tamina. Hi, my name is Aditya. I'm a Product Manager for the Splunk Enterprise platform as well for uh, focusing on analytics and dashboarding. Thanks, Aditya, and you'll hear more from Aditya soon. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about how to tell a story with your dashboards. The state of dashboards across Splunk today, which means what's available and what's new, Aditya will walk us through a great demo of the Splunk dashboards beta. And then we will cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of new dashboard beta capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout over the chat feature. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk community website for any follow-up questions. So can your dashboards help tell a story? To answer this, let's think about what we look for in a good dashboard, something that effectively allows you to see what's going on in your business and allows you to take action on it. So there's really five key things we want to think about when we're telling a good story with our dashboards. One, can they provide business context? Two, do they draw attention to key takeaways? Three, can you show an executive level summary or, or show a summary that's applicable to the persona or audience that you're targeting? And do they show operational level monitoring? Can you actually see you know, what's going on in your business? And finally, are they easy to create? Can you take action on them quickly? And do they look good? So I'd love to hand this over to Aditya to talk a little bit more about what's going on with Splunk to allow you to make these great dashboards. Cool. Thanks, Anna. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to talk to everyone here a little bit about how Splunk dashboards can tell a story. If you're familiar with Splunk today, you may know that there are two distinct and unique dashboarding styles and capabilities within the product suite. The first is uh, dashboards that are shipped out of box with our core Splunk Enterprise product uh, called Simple XML Dashboards. The other are glass tables that can be found in some of our uh, premium solutions, which allow for a completely different style of dashboarding. Uh, the, the quick takeaway is that the new dashboards beta combines the best of both to allow for flexibility and power um, that is provided between these two frameworks itself. I'll talk a little bit about what that actually means tactically here. The dashboards beta intends to combine the best of what Simple XML offers with the best of what Glass Tables offers. So Simple XML in particular has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. It's very powerful with a wide range of visualizations, including custom visualizations that developers can create, and complex token interactivity using our well-built token framework. Um, but to get anything truly you know, powerful done, you often need to get extensibility and customize it with HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Uh, it is a little bit limited with the pixel perfect layouts. Again, you do need uh, some level of expertise to get the more advanced functionality built, including some advanced tokens, um, token workflows, as those require a bit of uh, knowledge to actually set and hook up. Um, it's a little bit limited with its exporting with dashboards, um, and uh, it does not support icons and images out of the box. On the other hand, uh, glass tables uh, powerful in its own right, allows for an almost opposite set of capabilities. It allows for users to present granular layouts, uh, pixel-perfect canvas-style editing experiences, and supports icons and images out of box. But it cannot, again, export dashboards, uh, use a wide range of visualizations, uh, do any sort of complex tokenization for drill-downs, 
uh, without actually driving into another dashboard completely. And so what we've seen here is that simple XML and glass tables have their own strengths, uh, and we really want to combine these two into a single unified framework that can do the best of both. So this is where this dashboards beta comes into play here. The dashboards beta allows for uh, pixel perfect and fully customizable dashboard layouts with a complete canvas style editing experience. Um, again, this allows for users to go in and play around, add charts, images, visualizations with a UI driven editing experience. And yes, it does support graphics as well, uh, PNG, uh, SVG files. And the great thing is everything here is the same, SPL driven searches, uh, the same paradigms that you know and love about Splunk, now with a fully flexible uh, front-end UI to allow more affordances for you to create exactly those actionable, uh, beautiful, um, and operational dashboards that we talked about before. And in, in, in the sense of um, how it compares to simple XML and glass tables, these also allow for conversions between simple XML to the new framework and for those using um, ITSI. Uh, conversions from uh, classic glass tables to the beta framework as well. And so this is the future of Splunk dashboards, and it's available on Splunk Base today. So I'm going to demo a little bit about the dashboards beta. Today I'm going to walk through a couple of key components of the demo. Again, this is a very high-level overview. Um, I, the, uh, but we'll just talk about some of the basics of the framework, including the Canvas and the Editor UI. Um, source mode, a uh, source mode being a JSON formatted rather than XML formatted source mode. Uh, creating charts and visualizations, shapes and icons, and a quick introduction to uh, inputs and tokens. Welcome to the Dashboards Beta. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about an overview of what this beta consists of. Keep in mind, we are not doing a deep dive into all the features and all of the cool stuff that it comes with. You'll have to go play with it yourself to find all that stuff. We're just going to give a high level overview of uh, some of the basics of what this framework entails. So first of all, you're looking at the Dashboards Beta app right now. If I go click Edit, you go straight into Edit Mode. And you'll notice a few things here about Edit Mode. Uh, one, let's look at the top toolbar over here. That shows a global canvas editing and canvas adding uh, functions such as visualizations, uh, icons, uh, shapes, images, text boxes, all of which, which can be added to the overall canvas, which is shown in the center over here. Uh, of course, I have my, I have my settings. Uh, my configuration settings, which apply to the selected component on my canvas. Right now, nothing is selected. So configuration applies to the canvas background, for example, background color, um, which is not looking good as red right now. Let's stick with black or background image. I can talk to that as well. Over here is the source manager, which manages all of my data, data overview. For example, if I have any searches saved to the dashboard, it shows all those searches centrally uh, over here. So I can see all of my searches that I've saved to the dashboard right now. Um, and then uh, view into source mode. I talk about source mode later on in this. Of course, I can toggle on and off uh, grid lines over here, and then I can change the theme. Uh, right now, I'll stick with a dark theme, uh, just for the sake of the demo. So right off the bat, let's talk about what demo we're doing in the first place. Um, I've called this SFO Airport. You may have seen slides previously, but let's take a look at a use case. We're looking at performance analytics for the SFO, San Francisco International Airport. Uh, Splunk is headquartered out of the Bay Area, so uh, we do love our SFO airport. Um, the thing to note here is that we're not using real data. It's using either test data from lookups or, um, you know, in index equals internal uh, internal data. So um, let's look at a couple of things. One is uh, maybe wait time at uh, various security checks at the airport um, and some performance statistics about uh, on time performance, maybe like delays, cancellations, um, and then also like a little board showing our arrivals and departures in and out of the airport, just to give like a you know, basic high level overview of the SFO airport's performance right now. So let's start by um, adding a title. You know, we have a name for the title of the dashboard itself, but if we're presenting this dashboard, say we're going into uh, 
uh, presentation mode for this. What I can do is I'll put a title here. So I'm going to say SFO Airport Performance Analytics. So I added a text box here, put it in the top left corner. I'm going to resize it just a little bit on this uh, freeform canvas. And let's change the font. So again, this configuration is for the text box type. Let's see, I choose my font here. Yeah, I'll increase my font size over here. Um, resize this to make it fit. There we go, it looks pretty good. And choose my uh, weight, maybe bold looks better over here. I think I do like bold. And there we go. Uh, first canvas style um, uh, feature added to, to my dashboard right now. Next, let's get a little a background here. You know, we're talking about SFO Airport. It might probably make sense to get a, you know, a background of the airport itself. So let's upload a background image over here. I can do that in two ways. Uh, first thing I can do is, um, one second. The first thing I can do is uh, upload locally by pressing, for example, browse and uploading a PNG uh, to, uh, to local upload, or I can enter a URL. In this case, I'm gonna enter a URL, press enter over here, and uh, my background image is now the, the kind of a map of the SFO airport. It's kind of big right now, uh, so I'm gonna change the format and say, let's do a custom positioning here. Uh, image heights like this, let's do maybe X position being 350 and Y position being 200. That should be uh, around good over there. Um, and I know I'm gonna need to do, let's look at the general layout and kind of envision what we want the dashboard to look like. We have the gates over here, so I probably want my on time, or sorry, my, uh, my uh, wait time at various gates to show up on the left side because it's closer to those gates over here. In my general performance analytics for on time performance and departures arrivals on the, on the right side. So I do wanna visually separate that a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of background to the right side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a shape. Let's do the rectangle. Um, and to drop it over onto the side of the canvas, make it a little bit bigger, make sure I have the whole length of the canvas here. And let's change the uh, background color for this rectangle here. So right now the fill is this hex, I'm gonna change it and customize it a bit. Border is white, I'm gonna change that as well. And uh, there we go right now, we have uh, a little bit of a, a separation here just to show some of the analytics there. All right, so we've done a lot of shapes and fun uh, background and customizations for the canvas, but let's get into like the meat of it, the, the actual queries, the visualizations, the analytics that you wanna show here. So we wanna start with a single value because we're looking at wait time, right? It's only gonna be shown in minutes, wait time's gonna be live. I think a single value should be good enough here. I'm going to my visualizations menu, as you can see, I can immediately search for my, my visualization type. You can see there's many types, I can comparisons, trends, you know, gauge, tables, maps, distributions, et cetera. So let me go find my single value. There we go. Let's select here. Now you'll see I'm immediately pointed to uh, name a query, I'm sorry, fill, uh, fill out a query here that's attached to this visualization. Um, in this case, I actually have some visual, uh, some, some queries saved onto the dashboard that are not actively being used. So I'm just gonna go and apply that. So again, I click on my visualization and it allows me to configure this. I can choose my visualization type. I can title it maybe, let's say, gate G uh, wait time, right? I'll go set up my uh, data configurations here. I can go see uh, all of my queries that are saved to the dashboard right now. Let's go see gate G wait time. Let's apply this to the visualization. And now I have a single value popping up here. You may be asking what will, how did that even come up in the first place? Those queries that you saw are all SPL queries under the hood. In this case, I'm using, you know, an underscore internal index, uh, just some, you know, some fake field data that we're just getting from our internal uh, index on this demo instance. But um, again, completely compatible with SPL, same concept as before. Everything is powered by the SPL that you know and love right now. Now, 29 doesn't really mean much without context. This is hours, seconds. So let's go ahead and add um, some units over here. Digit precision zero is fine for, for minutes. Let's add that afterwards. Perfect, there we go. Resize that makes it a little nicer over here. Now, I don't really know if this is good or bad or, or not. So I really want to make sure I am calling out that 29 minutes is not good. That's, you know, that should be red. Like a 30 minute wait time is make me miss my flight. So uh, let's go and 
conditionally threshold this right now. I can go into my threshold settings and click uh, fill. Uh, so this allow me to now set a custom threshold uh, based on the number that's being shown in, in this uh, in the single value. I have too many thresholds over here. Let's say you know below 10, that's pretty good. Uh, it's a 10 minute wait time. I wouldn't be angry about that if I went to the San Francisco airport. So let's say that's a green. Below, between 10 and maybe, um, uh, between 10 and 20, I think that might be a little bit of a problem. So let's make this um, yellow. And above 20, maybe above, yeah, above 20, let's make that red. So basically between zero and 10, or sorry, 10 and below, it'll be green, 10 and 20, it'll be yellow, 20 and above, it'll be red. So now I've thresholded this, and now whenever that value changes dynamically, my threshold will be automatically updated. I can also show, you know, if this was a time chart, uh, right now it's using the stats right now, but I can do a time chart to show my spark line, uh, trending value in you know, absolute or percent, all those would be available as well. Now, I really don't know what gate this is actually tied to. So let me actually go and tag that gate on my SFO airport map here. Go add another shape. Let's see, let's use an ellipse here. Um, and tag it gate G. So let's make this a little logo I can tag over here. Let's fill this, maybe gate G is a purple gate. And label this as G. So we're very clear uh, about what metric we're comparing it to over here. It looks a little bit off here, so let's make sure we uh, center this a bit, maybe increase the Y position just a little bit, get that precision. That's probably pretty good. And let's draw a line to connect these two. So I'll go here, draw this line, point it to my gate over there, and maybe I'll change the thickness over here to make it a little more clear. Oh, that's a little bit too much. Let's go that. Choose my arrow is starting at any point as well if I want to. Maybe let's do a little colorfulness over here. All right, fantastic. Now all I have to do is uh, say I want to do the same thing for uh, gate E. Now all I got to do is take this and clone it. All of a sudden I've cloned uh, my single value visualization here. Let's call this gate E wait time instead. Um, modify this, maybe I'll remove this search because it just copied the search as well. I don't want to use the same search here. Set this up, use gate E wait time. And there we go. Same thing here. I can clone this. I can clone this. Call this gate E, get another line in there. And I am good to go. Now let's take a look at some of the broader performance analytics like on time performance. Uh, I think, you know, if we're looking at cancellations versus delays versus um, uh, on time flights, uh, that might be a good representation as a pie chart. So let me go find a pie chart here. Comparisons, oh, here we go, pie chart. I'm gonna do the same thing. I do have a saved search uh, on this dashboard right now. So I'm gonna go this, you know, over here, talk about uh, on time performance. Label that over here, set up a data source and say my search is, uh, where is this? Flight status breakdown. I miss a little bit bigger and take a look here. I can see I now have a pie chart showing, oh, look, I look up a little bit above 50% on time, which is I mean, not great. Would prefer that to be a little bit higher, uh, but um, a very small percentage being actually canceled. So that's good news. So I can go and go ahead and put this on my right side um, display over here. Um, I will make this uh, transparent in a second, but I'll show you how to do that soon, the background on this. And then we do also want to show um, departures and arrivals as well. I think in tabular format, that makes sense. You're looking like kind of like a uh, you know, next flight to depart, next flight to arrive. That does need to be in a little bit of a tabular format. And go ahead, create a table here. Same thing. 
hook up a data source, let's say arrivals. Fantastic, out of my query. Set it up over here. Maybe we will name it uh, arrivals, just so it's ultra clear here, and clone it for departures as well. There we go, just messing with this a little bit to make it look better. Uh, departures, set up the right data source, and we are cooking. Um, and of course, because this is San Francisco Airport, let's get a quick logo on there as well. A logo maybe in an image format. Um, I can go click here and add an image to my canvas. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Add an image as a URL. And just like that, of course, I can also uh, upload locally if I so felt like it. And easy as that, I have my logo uploaded to my dashboard. Now you might be thinking, all right, well, maybe I'm used to simple XML. I'm used to source mode. I work a lot in source mode. Um, is there an equivalent in the dashboard framework in this beta? Well, yes, and there is. And let's talk a little bit about it. All right, welcome to the dashboards beta source mode. You'll see right off the bat, it's not in XML, it's in uh, JSON format. So everything is a key value pair here. There are uh, five main sections that define this definition here. Uh, first is visualizations. Visualizations include actual charts like pie chart, line chart area, you know, maps, etc. Also text boxes and shapes. Um, so for example, our text box here is formatted as viz.text type with options defining how it actually will present itself on the uh, on the canvas. For example, the content text itself, font family, uh, font size, et cetera, et cetera. Um, visualizations that have actual queries running on them, like the single value, for example, say over here, will also have uh, an option, or sorry, uh, a configuration for data sources. Data sources are now, essentially searches are dissociated, kind of detached from the visualization concept where a visualization can actually go and reference a data source. That allows for a single data source to be used and leveraged multiple times across a dashboard if it so uh, requires. So in this case, the data source ID is right here. And that gives us a pretty good introduction into data sources itself. So let's go find our data sources section. Here is the data source that I just highlighted. In data source itself, I can figure out, this is essentially what defines all the searches on my dashboard. This one is of a normal inline ad hoc search type with the time parameters defined here and the actual query definition. So what this is saying is basically this uh, single value visualization is using this data source type, referencing this data source to define and use this query. And so all of the searches I'm using are in the data sources section in the source mode over here. All of these over here, uh, the lookups I'm using, the internal uh, index searches. The next section to talk about is layout. Layout defines uh, the pixel by pixel positioning for all of the elements on the dashboard. For example, um, this, could, this includes the structure for all the various visualizations. For example, this visualization has this X and Y position and this width and height position. And that defines the exact uh, location as an absolute uh, positioning on the canvas. Um, oh, I missed one, I think, back up here before I went there. There we go, uh, inputs. Inputs is the fourth uh, category of the data source, sorry, the, uh, the source mode itself. And that defines the global inputs that uh, we saw at the very top over here. In this case, this time range picker over here. So if you go back to that input section, you'll see that I have a time range input and a token that's being passed. Uh, right now, not being used anywhere, but I've defined it over here. And the last is defaults. So if you go over here, defaults controls um, the uh, global settings that apply across the dashboard, for example, a global refresh rate over here. Now let's use this uh, input that we saw over here. Right now, 
uh, none of these searches here are using any inputs uh, or any, any, any time ranges over here. So let's go and use that token that we just saw and uh, define and pass that token to define the um, query parameters for the visualization that we saw here. It's instead by saying uh, 24 hours, let's say uh, pass the token for earliest and latest. Fantastic. And now we see this is using a custom time so that if I were to go change for the last five minutes, maybe last 60 minutes, it averages out to 29 minutes and last 15 minutes changes to 45 minutes, for example. I can do the same thing here. I'll go find uh, gate E wait time. Let's see, gate E is using this data source. And you do the same thing here. Time range, oops. Uh, make sure I have the right token name. There we go, time range. Time range dot earliest and time range dot And now both of these are hooked up to this token. And last but not least, just for a little, uh, I guess, cherry on top, let's add a little icon here with a little airplane. This is an SVG uh, that, of course, allows you to customize its color. Go change that to white. Anything else I'd want to as well, maybe uh, blue if you so fancy. Put that right here. View mode, and there we go. I'll also go to full screen if I so felt like it. Now, this is just the basics. Uh, there's a ton of action, you know, packed, packed features in uh, this dashboards beta that we haven't even talked about. Uh, this is just skimming the surface. Uh, there's, as you, you know, there's, there's a lot more that you can do with this beta itself. So we talked a little bit about the dashboards beta overview with some high level looks at the features and functionality. So let's talk a little bit about the art of the possible. What you're seeing here, everything from the moving charts, the real-time searches, the visualizations, the icons, images, animations, are all part of this new dashboard built by one of our community developers, Aaron Chandler. So Aaron's showing exactly what you can do when you push the limits of imagination and creativity to tell a story with this dashboard framework, everything built from uh, the framework itself natively. All right, let's talk about what additional resources you have to dive into the beta itself. Uh, first, go ahead and download the app. It's available on Splunk Base and cloud compatible. Um, you can learn through documentation. We have pretty good documentation that's uh, being built out constantly during the beta. Uh, in blog posts, we talk about an overview for the beta itself, we talk a bit more about its purpose, and have per release blog posts to highlight certain features upon each new version drop. Um, at Conf19, we gave a couple of sessions talking about how to use it and how to develop with the beta framework. And you can find sample dashboard definitions in our GitHub repos. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Anna to wrap things up. Thanks, Aditya. So as I mentioned before, whether you're joining us live today or watching this at a later date, please continue the conversation with us on our Splunk community website. We really want to say thank you so much for joining us today. So we really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule today to join us. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We are excited to share this series with you.